that I can when I'm trying to get along. So let's leave it alone, cause we can't see eye to eye. There ain't no good guy, there ain't no bad guy. There's only you and me, and we just disagree. Welcome to my channel, my name is Doug, and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to look at this 1987 Parker Classic fountain pen. This pen is on loan for review from my friend Ron, and belonged to his dad Dennis. This is probably the thinnest fountain pen I've ever tried, and it has the coolest and most unusual nib. So, let's take a look at this 33 year old pen, and see if it will still write after all these years, right now. This is my friend Ron's Parker Classic. It belonged to his father Dennis's pen collection, which included pens of his I've reviewed before, like the 1950s Parker 51 and the 1970s Parker 45. Thanks, Ronnie, for the extended loan of this and other pens. The Parker Classic fountain pen evolved from the Parker 180, which had a unique triangular nib advertised by Parker to write in any orientation. By 1986, the 180 had been discontinued, and a gold-plated steel nib fountain pen was added to the Parker Classic line. So, this pen was available between 1986 and 1994, when the Classic disappeared from the catalog. The nib on the Classic was not the triangular, right-in-any-orientation style of the 180, but still a unique space-age-styled nib. When I got this pen from Ronnie, it had been stored away for quite a while. Even caked with old ink, the pen was easy to disassemble, clean, and re-ink. What I want to do today is take a look at the parts and the features of this pen, show some size comparisons and measurements, and then do a writing sample. Please stay tuned until after the writing sample, where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. This is a very, very slender pen. It's only about 9 millimeters wide at its widest point, and it's very light, around 19 grams, which is light for a metal pen. From the top, we see a gold-plated tapered finial with a Parker divot on the top. The finial is not attached to the clip, as the clip is clipped into the cap. The clip is a classic-style Parker arrow, which is very, very springy and very usable. One of the things you'll notice on cheaper clips is that the underside of the tip of the clip isn't finished and sometimes there are very sharp edges or burrs in the folded metal. This clip is smooth on the underside of the arrowhead and therefore slides in and out of shirt pockets really really easily without snagging. Now that's quality. The cap is matte black enameled metal and tapers up to a gold band, which is actually part of the top of the barrel. The back of the barrel shows some engraving, and the engraving here, I don't know whether you can see it or not, let's see if we can get close, there we go. The engraving says, PL, made in USA. And the front says, has a Parker logo and Parker. Parker date codes most of their pens, and this is no exception. That PL is the date code right there, which dates this pen to the third quarter of 1987. There is no step between the cap and the barrel and that ring. The barrel tapers down to a very slim 7 millimeters, and a small flared finial that has that same 
Harker divot on the bottom as it does on the top finial. The cap snaps off to reveal a very long textured plastic section that tapers to a metal ring and this very very unique triangular gold plated steel medium nib and you'll notice I got my finger a little bit too close to that nib if you look at the underside the nib is marked with an M for medium and that feed is attached to the entire nib assembly this is similar to the Parker 45 in that this entire assembly and that collar all slip straight out of that section and uh, can be replaced. The difference is the Parker 45, you can take that nib off of the, the assembly. This one, it is fused as part of it and you'd have to replace the entire assembly. The cap posts very deeply and securely with a snap. That end finial engages with the same internal cap clutch assembly that closes the pen when you cap it, which makes for a very positive posting. The pen is very, very well balanced in the hand when it's posted or unposted. It is significantly lighter, of course, unposted, almost too light in the hand. It's so slim and so light it feels like a quill. With that little bit heavier weight, it does not back weight the pen. It still is nib heavy, uh, but it's a much more balanced uh, kind of writing experience. And that long section allows you to grip this pen almost anywhere along its length. It's not surprising this pen evolved from a ladies ballpoint pen design. Tailored for the feminine hand. The section unscrews. And I have a Parker long cartridge in here. Um, it, this pen also takes Parker short and two Parker shorts, one in the barrel and one in the section. Piggyback. There might be a Parker converter for this pen. I don't know. I tried to put a pen BBS converter in the pen. It fit into the section, but the converter itself was too uh, thick for this very slim barrel. So let's look at some size comparisons. So here we have the Parker Classic with a Schaefer Targa, a Parker 45, a Parker Sonnet, and the ubiquitous Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's take a look at them posted. So here we have the five pens posted, the Parker Classic, obviously the slimmer of all of these. I consider all these slimline pens. The Schaefer Targa is a very, very slimline pen, but it's actually thick compared to this Classic. And of course that beautiful 14 karat gold inlaid Schaefer nib. There's the Parker 45 with its uh, semi-hooded nib. And that nib assembly just unscrews out of there, whereas this one is friction fit. And of course the nibs are a different shape. Here's the Parker Sonnet with its number five size nib, uh, which is very broad for a number five. And a nice long section here. All of these have really nice, comfortable, long tapering sections. And of course the Pilot Metropolitan. All of these pens post very beautifully. These slimline pens seem to post really, really nicely. Now let's take a look at some measurements. <music> And we are back with the writing sample for the 1987 Parker Classic. The paper here is Clairefontaine, 90 GSM. And this is the Parker 
classic. And it has a medium steel gold plated nib. The ink today is a Roshizuku Asagao and here is the Asagao it's a nice bright blue here it is with Dimene Sapphire Blue it's a little bit more purple and even a little bit more purple the Pelican Edelstein Sapphire. Let's check the wetness. It's a fairly wet pen and as to line variation that's no pressure. We're getting a nice standard medium line and a little bit of pressure and what's interesting about this pen, I don't know whether you can see it here or not, but the pen, the nib, flexes off of that feed, but the tines don't spread that much. So we're getting some bounce without any line variation. This is uh, interesting to me. It's a... Uh, a very, very unique kind of writing experience. And let's listen to it write. Well, it's very, very smooth, and it has a bit of feedback, just, just a touch of feedback. And as to reverse writing, it actually writes reverse very nicely, and you get a, a really nice different thickness line that way. And some quick writing. feed seems to keep up very nicely. So there you have it, the Parker Classic. Thanks go out to my friend Ron for loaning this pen for me for review. Now, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, first, it is a very elegantly designed slim pen with excellent fit and finish. The finish on this pen shows how durable it is. This pen is 33 years old and there's no sign of scratching or wear. The matte finish is not worn into a shine anywhere on the surface of this pen. This speaks volumes to Parker's quality of manufacturing in the United States. I also like the sleek space age design of the nib and the texturing of the long section which allows a non-slip grip almost anywhere on the pen. I also like the exquisite balance of this pen when it's posted or unposted. It's clear the designers considered balance both posted and unposted on this pen. What I don't like so much about this pen is the very slim style of it. This is just a personal preference as those with smaller hands would find this pen very comfortable. While I'm fond of the cool look of that nib, I'm not so fond of its diminutive size as I preferred larger nibs generally. The cap also, while it has a positive snap, tends to spin around very, very easily. And But that might be just a question of age. That uh, clutch inside the cap just might have aged over the last 33 years. Overall, this is a well-made slimline pen that lays down a wet, medium line of ink with a very smooth nib and is durable enough to toss into a briefcase or a purse. So, there you go. 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications when I post new videos like this. And that just leaves me to say, what do I say? Thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote.